Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 156. This episode is with my new friend and living legend, Yuri Lowenthal. Guys, listen, Yuri is the best. And I mean that. We recorded the show a while ago, and I've been beaming ever since. We talked about him growing up, moving a bunch, learning multiple languages, living in Japan, his travel show, Up, Up, and Away, which I highly recommend, how playing D&D has made him a better person, getting married in Vegas, how he got into voiceover, being the voice of Sasuke in Naruto, his upcoming show Orbital Redux, which looks so good, and so much more. Yuri is as awesome as he is talented, and that's saying a lot. You're gonna love him. So, let's just jump right into it. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 156, with Yuri Lowenthal. Theme song time. Right, right, and everything changes so often. Anyway, you know. Yeah, isn't it weird? Gain? What do you got to gain by learning it? Come on. I, you know what? I agree. I agree. You know what? Ha- Skype really dropped the ball because they had everything, and then Zoom showed up and was like, "How about this?" And you're like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I'd never heard of Zoom before the pandemic. Me and neither. I was, Sky- I was skyping everything. Same, same. Yeah. And then I found out that like a lot of people don't use Skype anymore, and I was like, "Oh." Right. Oh, right. Yeah. You are definitely not going to download an application. Uh Uh-huh. Zoom? That sounds nice. (laughs) Right. I just click this link. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Although I did do a show a few years ago where where it was over Skype and the guest, her headphones weren't like connected correctly. So Uh there was like 30 minutes of troubleshooting back and forth of like, is this working? You can hear me. I can't hear you. So yeah, when yeah. the sh- <laughs> when the show started, we are like cranked up to eleven. Like it worked! Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, listen to that one, guys. It it starts just super high up because <laughs> we <Yikes>. we won, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's good. It was good. Things you learn. Things you learn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you're you're no you're three hours behind me. So I'm assuming you're in LA. I think that is correct. Nice, yes. nice. You're yes. you're not from there though. No, no, I I'm not. I grew up all over the place. Really, really, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I, I I grew up in Nashville. I was I was actually I was oh. born in Ohio. Okay. And then a couple of weeks after I was born, uh, my family moved to Nashville, and I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And Good city. Yeah, yeah, and really, you know, certainly not the the Nashville I grew up with. It was great then, and now it's like a different kind of great. It, it's yeah, it's constantly changing. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. So fast. So fast. Nashville changes. Um, but then. Uh, uh, I, I, I moved to Virginia because uh, cool. my dad uh, started working at the State Department. And uh, then we lived in West Africa for a while. And oh, because of his work. Yeah, that's then, different. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I was all over the place for a while and spent some wow. time in, in Japan uh, during and after college. And I, uh, dude, yeah, I love I love to travel. I I, you know what? Mm-hmm. I can I know this because you're also like one of the hosts of my all time favorite travel shows. Stop it. I'm dead you serious. Know, you, you know just what to say to a Dude, girl. That listen, is... listen. I have seen every episode. Oh. I've been I've been a big fan of your stuff for a long time. So this is oh, way long overdue time. on my end. And I fun. I'm the same way. I have the travel bug. I yeah. love traveling. I think it's great. Uh rewatching Up Up in a way has been fantastic during this pandemic. I was gonna I've... say quarantine must be hell for you. Yeah. Oh, it's been, it's been awful. Us. It's yeah. been awful. Although, For so many different reasons, but but travel is definitely one yeah, of the things we miss. Yeah, same, same. So I was really excited when a new episode popped up semi-recently. So yes. thanks for that. <laughs> You're welcome. We we uh we're we're still catching up on old trips. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. that wasn't a recent trip. <laughs> uh, nor are they ever by the time they get posted. But of uh, course, yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Do you think that's where it started? Because you grew up traveling around a bunch. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And luckily I met a woman who who also likes to travel. There you go. There you go. It works. Yeah. yeah. I'm fascinated by Africa though. What what country were you in? Uh, we were in Niger. 
Nice. How was yeah. that? It was zero Saharan Africa. It's yeah. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, you know, poor country, but, uh, mm -hmm. but, but wonderful. Like I wouldn't trade, I was, you know, as I was there for four years and I, I wouldn't trade those wow. years for, for anything. Yeah. It's a long time. That's enough time yeah. to like actually experience it. Yeah. And I, I went to a, uh, a, a French school while I was there, the sort oh. of the, the, the local school that was uh, most appropriate was a French school. And, um, so I, I had to learn to speak French. Uh, luckily, luckily, I did it at an age that I was able to uh, retain. Right when you still have a spongy brain. Yeah, so, right, exactly. So, <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't just spend four years, you know, going to a French school and then it just disappeared. So that was that's good. It's still it's still in there somewhere. My my vocabulary is faded, but uh, sure, sure, enough to get by and ask for the bathroom. Exactly, I can still fake a bunch of people out. So perfect. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. And then if you can like do a little bit of the accent, that opens up a whole other window of opportunities. You there? Exactly. Exactly. I see it. I see it. Yeah. So you went there to also Japan. This all happened when you were young? Uh no, the Japan stuff happened later. Like, you know, a lot of the early travel was because my parents were that way. Oh, that makes and sense. then yeah, and I was, you know, sort of going wherever wherever they went. Uh, but they they definitely hooked me with that. So I, I had always you know, just been fascinated, or you know, from a very young age, from you know, watching Godzilla movies and oh yeah, you know, Battle of the Planets and Star Blazers and uh, Speed Racer and um, yes, you know, when I was a kid, stuff. yeah, exactly. And yeah. when I when I was a kid, like like ninjas were, you know, like nobody oh, yeah. had ever heard of ninjas before. Ninjas were a big deal, and um, and I just I just fell into uh, like a, a Japanese history and culture, a deep deep hole, and never came out of it. And so when I in, in my last year of high school, like the la very last semester, they offered this pilot Japanese program uh, cool. for studying Japanese language. And I, I grabbed it uh, and and uh, fell in love even more. And so when I went to college, I, I even part of my college choice was based on you got to have a, you know, a, a Japanese program. And uh, I, I went to William and Mary and they and they did. And they had the other things I was looking for. Um, in not not the least of which being um, uh, it was a, a Virginia school and I was living in Virginia, so I got a, an in-state tuition break. Perfect. But, perfect. Uh, yeah, I they like had, it. They had a strong, strong theater department. They had a gymnastics team and a Japanese program. And those were sort of the three things I was looking for. And they had them all. Really? And uh, yeah. And so I uh, went there and uh, the only way I could have like gotten more out of that Japanese program was to actually you know, do a junior year abroad, which is exactly what I did. So I, oh. I went, I did my junior year abroad in Japan. And then uh, I, I loved it so much that after I graduated, I'm like, I got to go, I got to go back. I, kn I knew from experience that my Japanese was not going to get really good unless I spent some quality time there. And so I, sure. I went back for a couple of years after college uh, to, to work. And I was basically sort of following my dad's footsteps. I was doing, you know, international relations and Dude. after a after a couple of years you know just working in a in a in a very uh, uh bureaucratic thing that that wasn't feeding me right um i i'm like oh man you know i caught the acting bug in high school and um, i always loved you know i never i never stopped doing it i did it in college and i even did it when i was you know working in japan oh wow I was, yeah i was always finding you know, opportunities to, you know, work with theater companies, stuff like that. And I'm like, man, I gotta, I don't want to look back in 30 years and go, yeah, oh, man, you know, that acting thing, that was the only thing that really got you fired up. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, too late now, nice. but wouldn't, wouldn't that, um, I wonder how that would have worked out. Right. So I, I knew the, I knew the bureaucratic, you know, government work would always be there. So if I, if this didn't work out, then I would, I would, you know, be able to come back and do something like that. And sure. And so there's I, left, still time. I left Japan. There's still, there's still time. You're right. You're right. It'll always be there. Man, you, know? you, you, you joke, but, uh, but imposter syndrome is real. And I am constantly, yeah. every now and then I'll be like, I may never work again. Oh God. Uh, that may have been my last acting job. Right. Um, I should probably see, God, I'm going to have to learn, you know, right. learn yeah. new software, but. Uh, That's right. Um, the next Zoom. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I went back. Uh, to to the states, I, I left that job and uh, and Japan. That I had fallen in love with with the country, and um, I was I was loving it there. But I I knew that if I wanted to try acting, 
Although um, there is a market for uh, white dudes who speak Japanese, you know, Ooh. in in Japan for something I, I guess I could have started there, but I, sure. I, I came back and uh, <laughs> you can't do it back. all, Yuri. Come right, on. I know, I know. <laughs> I uh, I came back and I I, I checked out. Uh, I, I figured out it would either be Los Angeles or you know New York is where I had to start. And so I, I, I drove out to Los Angeles. I had some friends in both places. Cool. Uh, I dro- drove out to Los Angeles and hated it and Fair. Uh, it, tried out New York and loved it. So so moved to, to New York and, and spent six years there just doing a lot of uh, just basically everything, you know, just living in my 20s in New York City. There you go. A lot of experimental theater and, you know, basement black box theater where there were more often than not, there were more people on the stage than were in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> that, That's that when was, you know that was, you love it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that, and that was sort of like my, my grad school in a way. I never went to grad school. I never went to school for acting proper. I did take a lot of theater classes in, uh, at, at, in college. Really? Uh, I yeah. I know this. Yes. Um, did a lot wild. of plays. Did a lot of plays in college. Uh, but never went to grad school. But I feel like the six years I spent just you know, acting all the time for, <laughs> yeah. for, for free or less um, was, uh, was, was kind of like my grad school. And then, yeah, and then I met, I met my wife there doing a, 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 a grad film. I, I wasn't studying at NYU film mm-hmm. school, but, uh, but, we, you know, as, as actors in, in New York, you sort of dip in, you work on a lot of student films and, of course. and that was, that was Been where there. Tara and I met. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I should, yeah, I should ask a little more about you. Oh, Brian. no, no. Legally, I, you're not allowed. Legally, I'm not uh, allowed to. Right. Le- <laughs> legally, you're not allowed to talk about it. I right. understand. Or you'd have to kill us all. That's right. no, every, everyone listening to this podcast, <laughs> you'd have to go out and murder every single one of them. That's right. That's right. No, I just go to the source, take myself out. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody knows. Exactly. Um, but uh, then, you know, when it ended up going to Los Angeles with Tara and uh, while we were out here, you know, trying to trying to become, you know, big movie stars and and you know, working in film and TV, uh, we found voice acting. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. Um, so yeah, you always you always have a picture of what your career will look like, and then you always have to remember yeah. that you can't plan for everything. You have to be super flexible. And uh, thankfully, we were we, we you know we we stumbled into this and uh, were able to make it part of our acting life, and and uh, we're able to. To, to just be, to become as you know joyful a thing as as it has been over the last for, for years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> since we got out here, the last four just, years just, since you right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The last four years. It's all it took. It's all it I've, takes. I've been keeping the math. I got it. <laughs> right. It's, it's the new math. It's the new I, math, Brian. I wonder what is your house made of that it can contain such concentrated talent of two individuals. Oh, because Brian. there's, I watched a lot of Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. So mm-hmm. there's there's like a an aura of power. That comes from beings, <laughs> right, right. and I just I don't think concrete can can handle it. <laughs> so I, they're they're spe- especially reinforced. Okay, that makes sense. The, the that, line... That's actually that's the only question I had for you. So I'll talk to you later. Um... Okay, great. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to talk. It's a proprietary metal. Yeah, that no, that's it. I actually to... I'm only into gotcha. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's vibranium laced with adamantium. I knew it. I knew it. you just yeah. made me twenty dollars. Thank you. Right. I yeah, knew it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's nuts. So by the time you're like getting to New York, how many languages do you speak passively? Um, by uh uh four passively. What? what? Yeah. The, the the French uh the, the French held over and the the Japanese was was right, you know right hot off the press. Sure. And. And I had also uh, studied German, and a lot of my relatives are oh, lived in what? Austria and Germany growing up. And so, uh, my German is terrible now because I, <laughs> I didn't do with German what I did with Japanese and French. I didn't like put myself in an you know an immersion right. situation over an extended period of time. So it mm-hmm. never, it never stuck the way it did, um, the way the other two did. But but I bet if I went and spent three to six months in a German speaking country. It, it'd probably come back. That's so cool. That's so cool. I, yeah. I remember I like tried to learn Japanese for like yeah. six months and I got uh-huh. conversational enough to where I could watch some anime and be like, oh, yeah. I know that word. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it didn't stick. I'm sorry to let I, you down. Yeah. I will be I will be honest. As good as my Japanese is um, still watching stuff. Yeah. 
hard, man. Oh, I bet. Um, it is. There's just all sorts of like interesting specialized vocabulary that happens when you you know that there's a TV show and they're talking about, uh, you know, whatever they're talking about, and it, it goes by really fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I have not kept up on my slang. You know, just because I haven't uh, sure haven't lived there in a long time, and and I will I will always turn the subtitles on. Because I, 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 yeah, I constantly Same. need to be referring to subtitles. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So, oh my God, slang is another thing. I had a guy I worked <laughs> with who was like, I was like, I want to learn Spanish. I would like to learn this. I just took like two years in high school. I remember the basics. Can you teach me? And he would teach me these things. And I was like, I want to learn like conversational, like walk in and order a sandwich. And he right. would teach me things. And I was like, I don't recognize this word. So he was teaching me slang. And I was like, don't do that because I'm going to walk in <laughs> and say, give me a sandwich. And they're going to spit in it. I would rather ask. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's colloquialism is is a different lane. It's nuts. Yeah, it's, it is. It is hard. That's crazy. And so you you performed in Japan, you said? Um, I did. I, I, I worked with some some theater companies. That's so cool. And uh, yeah, and did some. You know, I was making like stupid little, you know, short films with my friends. Sure, of course. Stuff like that. Hey, those things are awesome. So bad. Yeah. No, they're the they're, they're, they're the best. Um, but, uh, I was, I worked with a, with a, an Australian company at a theater company there oh. uh, called Zen Zen Zo, And they, we did a production of Macbeth where oh. wow. yeah, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. The, the lead actor Macbeth was played by a Japanese actor who didn't speak any English. Oh, and Lady, Lady Macbeth was played by an English actress who didn't speak any Japanese. What and How? it was just this amazing physical performance, and the the witches, the, the you know the the weird sisters, all three of them uh, would echo the lines you needed to know for sure. They would sort of echo them throughout the play. So if the you know Macbeth was speaking, they would echo them in you know little bits in English, and if Lady Macbeth was speaking, they would echo them in Japanese. And it was what it was, it was, it was super cool. That's it was super awesome. Cool. Yeah, man. And yeah. So yeah, so there was. I mean, th thankfully there was, there was that there for me to get into and and discover what I really, you know, where my heart was, what I really wanted to do. Right. What was it like? It was theater always the goal? Were you like, I want to do this? What was it that drew you to it? I I never really knew exactly. I, you know, in 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 high school, I'd always. I mean, like, I didn't grow up, you know, wanting to be an actor or even thinking that that was a job. Really that you could get. Sure. Um, until. <laughs> But but you know I got into high school and I and I loved you know I, I loved playing Dungeons and Dragons and I loved Same. video games and I oh I loved you know, just a huge huge cinephile you know I just I just love yep. love love movies. Um, we have and, a lot in common, Yuri. Uh, see, I, I knew we would get along, Brian. <laughs> I, knew I was, was so I, nervous. I, I like, knew it wasn't oh, just going to be you. I, I wasn't just it wasn't just going to be you and Daisuke. I knew I knew yeah. we'd have something to talk about too. <laughs> I thought about um, it, but was, mm. although although he's he's one guy that I would love to. I'm sure our paths will have to cross. They eventually. have to. We've never yeah. met, but but I, I have this feeling that we would also get along. I think so too. I'll and become I, best and I friends. Promise with him. We'll hook it do up. It, do it. <laughs> I, I promise I wouldn't only just use him as an excuse to speak Japanese again. Listen, do it. He'd probably like it. Right. right. <laughs> um, but I yeah, in, in high school it was something I remember thinking, oh, I would love to to try acting. Sure. But but it was always like I never never had time because I was either I was playing DD or I was, you know, I was you know, right. video games or I was, you know, collecting comic books or or yeah, I was yeah. or I was doing, you know, sports. I was I did gymnastics in uh, in high school and oh. like it was always there, there was always, you know, something else. Right. Um, and finally, I got into my last year of high school. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, if I do want to try it, I should I probably got to try it before I leave high school, because if I if I get into college, I'm not going to start there. Right. So, I'm, you know, I'm not going to, you know, all of a sudden be like, oh, I want to try this. Yeah, way too and, late. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, you're sure, of course. Yeah, yeah that train has um, passed. <laughs> yeah, talk, yeah talk, talk that to, you know, say, say you know, ask Dan, Danny Aiello about that. You know, he started yeah. back when he was like 50. Yeah, um, but, that's right. <laughs> but I thought, I, I, I better try it now. And I, and I did, and I immediately fell in love with it. So I'm glad. That's that cool. It. Yeah. It's it's a specific thing to get into and an even more specific thing to get good at, I find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and but you can get good at it. Like, yeah, I would I would argue that getting into it, I did not have any innate talent. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just it was just doing it over and over and over again and learning yourself and learning what works. And yeah, um, I, I was I, I would argue that I was 
that I was a writer before I was an actor. I mean, I was I was loved Ooh. writing. I was loved writing before I ever got into acting, and and I still do, and it's still you know it's still very useful. And I, I think maybe it just boils down to the fact that I think I just love storytelling and yeah. writing is part of that, and acting is part of that. You know, filmmaking and theater and just you know all of it is. I just love all of those things. And now, you know, now with a, you know, a young child here at home, I I find myself telling him stories all the time. Uh, Whether I'm reading them out of a book or making them up on the fly because he demands it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Back to work, father. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Dressing up, you know, to to make sure that uh, he has someone to play with, which during quarantine has been challenging. I bet. I bet. Uh, But we've made it work. Good. Good. I'm not surprised. That, that that's that's another thread as well though because D D I find is some of the best storytelling you can do because you make your own character and you live it out. 100%, it's great acting practice. Hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. It's so good. What's your what's your class? Do you have a favorite? I uh, you know, I when I was when I was when I first started playing, I was I was partial to paladins. Ooh. Uh, I remember of of the of all the characters like I remember early on growing up, there was there was a paladin, there was a ranger, and yeah. there was a monk. And I, I loved them all, but I think I loved, I think I didn't love them equally. I think I loved the paladin most of all. That's fair. It's a good so, class. So later in life, when I got back to it, I avoided the paladin class. I was like, <laughs> I can't, I can't keep doing that. That's just a, it's a crutch. <laughs> right. And I, so, so for years now, I've, I've not played paladins until very recently. I'm like, why did I, why did I stop playing paladins? <laughs> like I was, so, so I've, I've recently in, uh, in a couple of games a couple of different uh, campaigns have, have have gotten back to it. Uh, but, but I, yeah, one. no, I, 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 th- I, I honestly, I, cr- I credit playing D and D as a kid with making, if, if, if there's anything that's good about me these days, it's probably because I played D and D growing up. I'd be like, yeah. if I'm yeah. well read, it's because of D and D. If yep. I know how to deal with situations um, and, you know, people and, you know, d- d- compassion and just d- 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 diplomacy, any of that, it's because of D&D. If I know anything about mythology, it's because of D&D. Like yeah. so many things yeah. Yeah. Are, are because of that. And and I think that everybody should play it growing up and I'm already grooming my son to do that. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I feel the exact same way. It, it, it pays so many dividends that you would not yeah. expect. It's nuts. I, I yeah. just started playing like three years ago. I got married. Uh-huh. And then uh-huh. I remember uh, my groomsmen. I was like, guys, we've been talking about this our whole lives. Now that you're in my wedding, you have to be a part of my life forever because that's how this works, I think. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I like, eloped. I eloped. So so I didn't have any of that. But I would like right, to believe yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that they are bound to you now. Yeah. That's right. You missed out on a good D&D party, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, we started uh, playing and, and didn't stop. Uh, Rangers. Great. Rangers are my game, man. Yeah, I get uh, it. They're so cool. I'm, my my longest sort of lasting uh, campaign that I've been playing over the last uh, few years, I'm still I'm playing a ranger. So I nice, it. nice. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I mean, acting practice as well, because you learn to make yeah. decisions as yeah. a character. Like I've gotten so much better in the last three years, just being like, oh, what? Oh, he would do something differently than I would. So I need to exactly. It's really and, cool. And and if and if you're a DM, which I have never been, um, oh, you've got to be a, a master <laughs> thespian. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so many, so many things. But yeah, you're right. You have to all this. You have to learn how to think as somebody else and make decisions. Accord, you know what would you can't just think. I mean, you know, when your kids playing D and D, yeah, you pretty much make the decisions that you would make as totally, a kid, yeah. which, are, which are why you, you know, Leroy Jenkins, everything. That's is, right. <laughs> and, I know what but, the dice but, said. Listen. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as you know, as, as, as you get older, you, you, you start trying to think like, you know, I would do this, but what have I established with this character? What would mm-hmm. this character do? What is the character's background? And, and that's all like acting one oh one. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. The one hand washes the other and you wouldn't expect it to, cause it's so diminished in the grand scheme of things of like, Oh, it's, it's D and D like, no, 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 no. You get what you put in and you can yeah. put in a lot. Yeah. It's Ooh, awesome. I know. Yes. yes I love I it so much. You did you get married in Vegas? Uh yes. Yes. In fact, in fact, I did. Or we did. Uh Pretty we, good. you know, it was, yeah, we were we were actually we were coming out to Los Angeles. Oh. And uh 
it, it was it wasn't planned. It was it certainly wasn't <laughs> planned. Sure. But we were, you know, we were we were in a a, a Chi-Chi's uh, Mexican restaurant and in perfect in Bowling Green, Ohio, in the in the middle of winter, and the snow was coming down, and we we got out of the restaurant and we were clearing ice off the windshield and just it it just came out of my mouth like i don't to this day i don't remember thinking i'm gonna ask her to marry me i just said it like it just came out of my mouth <laughs> uh, as, as when if you know. i had been bewitched by her exactly That's right. <laughs> she had you <laughs> and yeah and i think and i think neither of us like right in that in that moment i mean she thankfully she said she said yes but, nice. that but helps. in that moment neither of us were expecting it so we didn't know what to do after that moment oh, on a road trip too. on a, on a road <laughs> no. trip. So we just kind of ignored it and shut up about it for like six days. <laughs> um, and I think it built up and built up and built up inside us. And then as we were outside of, uh, outside of Vegas and sort of, we, we started talking about it and we decided, I guess, you know, if we both know we want to do it or why wait. And so we yeah. ended up getting married in Vegas that night, which is a whole That's other movie. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was, love that. Yeah. And I, and I like to believe somehow that we, we, we give getting married in Vegas uh, a good name because, you know, 20 years later, we're still married. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You're, yeah. You've, you should become the model of it. Like, right. It can work. <laughs> but spokesperson for Vegas. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're going to have to rebuild their, you know, actually, they don't have to rebuild anything. No. You know, I was, I was thinking about this recently. I was like, oh, it's going to be great, you know, as as things begin to open up and things begin, you know, become safer to, to travel, there'll be all these deals uh, because people right. will want to get to the, and, and I thought about it and I'm like, no, there won't. No. <laughs> Everybody wants to get out and, and people will literally do anything yeah. to do this. Like you could double the price and people will still want to do it. That's so true. Oh, there God. won't be any deals. And Vegas yeah. doesn't need me to, uh, <laughs> to be a spokesperson for anything. People will. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I believe that, Nobody's stopped going to Vegas even through quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah. have my own thoughts about that. Yeah, fair. I think I think you I think that's a safe bet. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think they need my help. Is I guess what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean they could probably use it. Sure. I'm just saying that. Sure. You know, 20 sure. years is pretty good. But then mm. that's the thing is, would you become the spokesperson or the exception? Ah, uh, mm. yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. I had not thought about the. There's going to be people who didn't like to travel beforehand that now really want to. We've Probably. got competition, Yuri. Yeah, I know. Everybody's going to start their own uh, internet travel show that nobody <laughs> watches, except for you, Brian. <laughs> except, except for, for me. You. Listen, you. listen. <laughs> if they, they just, they have a quality bar that they have to reach now, if I'm going to watch it, just so you know. Exactly. So Tell for you what, anyone out great, there. Great, great way to write off your travel. Yeah. <laughs> doing it for a show. That's right. <laughs> Good luck finding a better title, though, you boobs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh man, so you're going there. You're headed to LA. You'd been to LA before, and you're like, "No, nah, I think I'm going to go to New York." But now you're going back to LA. Yeah. How 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 was that? What where's your head at? At this it was point? well. I'll tell you what. The 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 cool thing that happened was, LA is overwhelming. No matter how you totally look at it, sheer I think. density. Yeah, density and and driving and and just the sprawl of it all. Yeah, uh, and especially coming from New York, where everything is so condensed and and in oh, a way true. very easy. Right. Um, and I have a theory about the the energy in New York and the energy in LA, and uh, which I will get to in just a second. But I luckily I had over the years before that, you know, after that first time that I went to LA and just hated it. Right. Um. I I would come back to visit specific people and the. Every oh, time I came out, smart. I felt like I'd, I could wrap my head around it a little better. Sure. So by the time we had moved out there, it was it, you like eased it into was, it. it was, yeah, it was it was not the worst. Um, but but I th I feel that you know when I was living in New York, that the shoot like the energy of the city from just being so much in such a tiny space uh, propels you. I think um, it like it it you don't have to think about, oh, I should probably go out and do something like it pushes you out the door and out onto the street and you're talking to people and you're going places and everything's really close together and you don't have to expend a lot of extra energy to go out and do stuff and to explore and have exciting adventures. I can see but, that. Yeah. But, but in Los Angeles, it's yeah. the same energy, but it's spread out over yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. a huge amount of distance. 
And yeah. so there's there's great stuff to do and a lot of excitement and adventures to be had, but it takes a lot more energy on your part to, and I don't mean you, Brian, necessarily. I, I mean, it, a person's it, part. For all of us, man. Right. <laughs> um, and to, you know, to, to go out there and, and make things happen. Um, yeah. And to find things and to connect with people. I've, I've, I've had a lot of friends who have moved out here uh, to, you know, to do, you know, the same thing, to, you know, acting or film or whatever. Sure. And they, 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 they get stuck. They, they, they get stuck in their apartment mm -hmm. and they don't have the, you know, what it is to, to, you know, to get you out there and to really push you out and to, to do those things. And, and after a year or two, they, they leave because they haven't been able to find that energy or to, you know, to, to, to push themselves out. And I think you know, right. it always makes me really sad because sometimes they're hugely talented yeah. uh, people who I think should be, you know, famous. Uh, and sure. And they just, they just don't get their chance because of, of the energy of the city. I don't know. It's tough. It can LA, LA, despite what it looks like can be the loneliest place in the world. Yeah. That, I mean, it's kind of like that whole thing about being lonely in a crowd. Yeah. And like the competition as well. And just it, sure. it takes an, an insane amount of drive, I find, to pursue acting anywhere. But if you're yeah. in the hub where everyone else is trying to do it as well, it's like you have to have this extra tank of reserve to yeah, continue to, up the just to stay in the game, really. 100 percent. And that's, you know, somebody asked me not that long ago. They're like, what's do you have any advice about, you know, they wanted to come out and and, you know, to Los Angeles and and try their hand at acting. And and I thought about it because because, you know, advice is I, I, I think advice is bullshit just because <laughs> because, uh, you know, if I if mean so, something that wrong. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, something, you know, that that worked for you. It, if you tell it to somebody else, the you know, yeah. the thought that, oh, well, it worked for me, it's going to work for you is just is just ridiculous. almost never it never yeah never <laughs> yeah. happens that way yeah but, but i thought about it for a second and i said um i said okay come out to los angeles don't die <laughs> like that's <laughs> solid because solid well, advice solid in that i have found that the people who who stick it out over time and can maintain that energy and can can stay positive about it you, you just keep you meet more people and you do more things and the, the more you have more opportunities like the longer you don't die out here yeah <laughs> or don't leave just be the last um, one standing <laughs> yeah it, it's it, you it just uh it just gets better and better i think as far as that's concerned i don't know but then again that's that's you know that's advice i, I think know, it's true I, advice that's great advice though because i also i enjoy practical advice you know, mm -hmm. having talked to a bunch of people, it, it yep. was funny. I had Greg Baldwin on recently uh -huh. and his advice, he goes, make friends with a showrunner. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, right. You're, he's like, that's, it worked for me. <laughs> he's like, yeah. That's all you got to do. And you're like, you're exactly right. There is no, there's no rules at all. It, it's no. so much and, luck and so much just like, just, just stick it out. <laughs> yeah. And you who've, you know, spoken to a lot of people about stuff like this probably could, could speak you know could confirm this and then nobody has the exact same path in none a lot of people are like can you tell me how i can like i want a career like you can you tell me how i can do it and i'm like man i could tell you it's worked for me but every single person i know out here doing the same thing as me got there a different way yeah absolutely can, there's some commonalities here and there but um but you got it's you got to find your own path absolutely so. I, yeah. I find the biggest common denominator of everyone I've spoken to is do the work yourself. Because yep. if you do the work, luck is preparation meets opportunity. But the preparation yep. is all on you. Yeah. And it's it's so like, I I remember I took an acting class one time. It was, it was an auditioning class, actually. Uh -huh. And the casting director was like, here are some tips. Here's how to do it. We did this whole workshop. And I was like, all right, cool. Got all my notes, implemented the skills, went to a different casting director for another audition. And I tried to implement those things. And he's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, that you know what she said. And it goes, oh, right. Those are her rules for her office. Right. A different cast director wants to do. None of this is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's everybody's making it up. Yeah, all of it. All of it. as soon as you can understand that. <laughs> um, yeah, that. And I tell people, um, make your own content. Like, make your own stuff. We, yes. we live in a golden age yes. of. You don't need to wait around for somebody to say, yes, we'll tell your story now. 
that, you know, I, I choose you or I choose your story. Mm -hmm. You can, you don't have to wait to get cast anymore to at least start telling the stories you want to tell. Yes. And, and then in the end, you own that stuff too. You're not just, you know, working on somebody else's thing. And then they really reap, you know, the majority of the, the, the reward on that. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If any people are asking for, I think that's, I think that's also pretty solid. Yeah. Um, and at the very least, it'll keep your heart happy. That's what, that's why Tara and I started producing things on our own is yeah. we're out here, you know, trying to make it as actors and, you know, it's, it's waiting for somebody to tell you it's okay to do that thing you want to do. And that's hugely frustrating and not yeah, at all empowering. Mm -hmm. So you just, you got to start, you're just making your own, even if it's just for your heart and your, you know, keeping your brain right, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's true. And that is another thing that also shows your level of like commitment and drive in that you're not waiting around to get permission. You're like, I'm going to do the thing and you're getting better by doing yeah. the thing as well. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to, I mean, that's it. You got to, you got to do it poorly, do it slightly less poorly the next time, do it a little better the time after uh -huh. that, you know, get like, you can't just jump in and be, you know, despite all the stories of, you know, overnight successes and so on. I don't think anybody jumps in and is, is brilliant right off the bat. Agreed. I think you've got to make mistakes. And I use mistake as, as not a pejorative term at all. I think it's, I think they're very important and they're yeah. crucial to you getting to the thing that you want. Agreed. You've got to figure it out and you can only figure it out by doing it and 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 doing it. I agree. Yeah. And that, I, what's that like old saying? It's like a master has failed more times than a beginner has even tried or something yes. like that. I'm like, yeah, I, I haven't heard that exact one, but yes. Yep. Yep. You can yeah. have it. That's yours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've got one that I keep trying to remember. I, I don't I don't know if I got it out of a fortune cookie or off of a, you know, a tea bag or whatever oh, it was. What do you got? Um, but it's uh, what you what you do every day is what you will become. Oh, and I, I really I, I, I have never been able to track down who that quote is. is Yuri from, Lowenthal. But, but That's where no, it's from. <laughs> no, I, would, I would love to lay claim to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so you gotta, you just gotta do it and do it and do it. If that's really what you want, if that's really what you want to do, you just gotta do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. Yeah, that's nuts. But I, yeah. I mean, practical advice, your book that you guys made, I bought mm -hmm. the audio book, I will say, because uh -huh. I heard that you guys read it. And that's like my rule of thumb. If the author reads the audio book, I'm getting the audio book. Cause I want to hear the intent and like, nice. I want you to tell me your things. Yeah. And I've listened yeah. to it twice and it's so good. Oh. Uh. Brian, thank you so much. And you updated it, which you did not have to do. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yes, and no. You're right. We could have we could have rested on those the laurels of the first book, but it's like so much had changed, and we had learned so much more. And yeah, you know, the technology and the 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 world that we were you know talking about in the book had changed as well. And but believe, but you know, it took us until after we had done the second one to go. Hey, maybe we should do an audio book. Like the audio book <laughs> of that is very recent. And we were very, we were kind of embarrassed about that. We're like, we just did a book about voice acting and we never released an audio book. Right. <laughs> um, so it's a little so to I'm the imagination. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm so, I'm so happy that you, that you enjoyed it. It's uh, we're, we're very proud of it. it uh, you should be. Yeah. It's a, it's a big deal. It's really, really cool. It's one of those, like now that I, cause I, I've, I've talked to a bunch of voice actors and it's really cool to like hear their stories and everything and the resources that I always get. A lot of people go back to like, if you want to get into voiceover, go to D Bradley Baker's website, which is yes. the encyclopedia of incredibleness. I, and yeah, now I, he's always my first recommendation when people yeah. are like, Hey, I've been thinking about, it. I'm like, go to here's, here's D's website. Yep. I want All of it. <laughs> for those of you listening. I want to be a voice actor.com. Yes. Um, yes. You it's can start everything. To start today. Yes. It, uh, for free. It's just, yeah. just, he's just there, but and, I would say, he is the salt of the earth uh, before, oh, before you say what you guy. say. And I want to hear what you say. He is, you're right. Um, he is uh, one of my favorite people in this business, but yes, you and have to say. Rightfully so. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'll jump on that as well. I ran into him at a con once mm -hmm. and he was just looking at stuff and I was just like, you're, you're D Bradley Baker. And he's like, Oh, Hey, and this was like in 2012. And he like talked to yeah. me for a little bit and I was like, I didn't know you were Appa and Momo and avatar does the noises right on command. I'm like, Oh yep. my God, this is crazy. And he's so nice. He's yeah. so nice. And I'm like, you could have been a dick. And I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right, he's a living right. legend. Yeah, because you're so talented. Yeah. That's right. No, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's otherworldly talented. Yeah. Yeah. But he also, but he puts in the work too. Yes. And, he, and he has. He doesn't, he doesn't just, those don't just automatically, the perfect noise doesn't automatically come out. He yeah, no. practices. He works on stuff. He, he develops things. He, he, he explores parts of his body that are not normally 
you don't normally think of when you're thinking of voices yeah. to see what else he can wring out of the human voice, you know? It's nuts. He knows the intricacy of his own skull and is like, hold on, yeah. let me close this cavity and do this. And now we have yeah. the Gears of War monsters. We're like, how? How, yeah. how did you figure that out? <laughs> uh, by doing it and doing it and doing it. Yeah. Doing it. <laughs> Bonkers. It's yeah. so nuts. But I would throw your book right up there alongside it. I'd be like, oh, as far as a resource you. goes, like when you break down demos and stuff like that, I'm like, that's information mm -hmm. that nobody tells you. You know, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. just make a demo. And I'm like, it, but there is a technique right. to it. And you yeah. guys are like, here. So thank you. Well, Hold you're, on. You're, you were so welcome. Thank yeah, you. You, did. you guys are doing a good job over there. <laughs> thanks. 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 I guess we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing it as long as people keep yeah. saying it's, you know, yeah. If you wouldn't mind, well, just for yeah. me, yeah. just do it yeah. for me now. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you, that I'd ever been able to. I don't know that I'd ever be able to stop. I you wouldn't. I, I have a lot I, of energy. I, I I I think about you know. Oh, is there a point at which I'll retire, or is there a point no. at which people will just get sick of you know nope. hearing me and move on? Because there's so many other you know extremely talented and awesome people in this True. in this business. Um, and I and then I I, I wonder. I'm like, and then I, and it makes me nervous. I'm like, what else would I do? Like, <laughs> I can't think of anything that I love as much as this sure yeah. sure i mean i'd have to feed my family but true i hope true. i can keep doing it doing this i don't i don't think you have to worry about it uh, to, to put you at ease a little bit you have so many credits that scrolling down your imdb page my browser had to load twice wow yeah that's what i said wow. i was like sheesh i'm not gonna i'm, I'm research sorry. any of this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i mean you've done some crazy stuff You've done some crazy stuff. So when you 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 can speak Japanese pretty early on, right? And then mm -hmm. you get yep. into anime, which is, yeah. I mean, how is that not a dream come true for somebody who's it, interested in the culture? Then to it do really it really was, and that was, and that was, you know, that also came from doing it because we we got out here and uh, when when Tara said she suggested maybe we should try voice acting in addition to going on a million TV auditions and you know yeah, uh, uh, we, we need to make some money <laughs> yeah. um, and and I'd like to do it without having to you know also be a secretary and a waitress my entire life totally I'm like I, I get it um, and we, we took a class and it just so happened that the teacher Rick Zeef who I, I recommend his class still today he's we, we still we're still friends and we still work together and he's an extraordinary human being Hell yeah and a great teacher but he uh, he got a job directing an a, an anime dub the voices Ooh. for you know, he did as a voice director um right about the time that i was finishing up the class with him uh -huh. and so he started he started auditioning his students Dude. and and i booked a i booked a role and that introduced me to that world and the people who work in that world a lot right so I, somebody at a session while while we wouldn't generally record solo you know you'd wait and you'd meet other people in the waiting room and and they'd you know if you hit it off they're like hey you know uh, you know i could introduce you to x you know person or you might be good for this show or this person should know or you're, you should know this person or whatever and it right. um, networking you know, one thing led to another and then um it kept leading to things and I, I kept doing it and and i think speaking speaking japanese may have you know helped me a little bit but mm -hmm. i don't know many people in this business who do speak japanese so you know it's it's certainly not a prerequisite for this job right um just adds yeah, an extra it's, flavor it's been, yeah and 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 you know just the way that the path is so twisty it was through a coordinator um doing anime um she was looking for japanese speakers uh for a warner brothers show that she also worked on as a coordinator oh and uh the teen titans trouble in tokyo oh. and she had she was her job was scouting you know japanese talent so that they could um you know, fill it out with with Japanese speakers, and I got hired for that. It was the first time I worked with Andrea Romano. Oh. It was you know some of the first wow you know, original you know Western animation that I yeah. had done, and the first time I got to work over at Warner Brothers. And so, dude, you never know what. I mean, that's the thing. I think also as far as unsolicited advice that uh, that will will likely not work yeah, for anyone it. else. Um, I'd say live live an interesting life because I've. Yes. I, you know, just do just do things. Don't Thank don't always you. think, you know. I, I see a lot of people studying acting, and they spend all their time studying acting, and all their money and all their resources studying acting in classes or putting together the right thing or you know your reel and all this stuff. And 
and I, I think, I think being an interesting person makes you an interesting actor. And I think if you, if you travel and you, 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 f- you know, follow your passions and, you know, the things that you love, you know, whether you don't know that, that macrame that you love and you spend all that time, you don't know that you won't be sitting next to somebody and they're, or, you know, you meet somebody in a macrame workshop and then you find out that they're that showrunner. Yes. <laughs> that, you know, well, yes. Like you don't know. And I didn't know that, you know, I thought Japanese was going to be, me, you know, going to the family business and doing international relations, I did not know that it would help me in this job. But I think everything you learn to do that you're passionate about, that you follow will help you somehow. Agreed. I hope. I hope that's true. I I can only hope that's true. Me (laughs) too. I am so glad you said that because I could not agree more. That's Mm -hmm. one thing. So it's called the interesting podcast, right? I (laughs) will tell you that if somebody if I look into someone before I ask anyone to come on the show, I do a ton of research. I've usually been a fan of them Clearly. for a long time. You know, I try, but I also, I look for something different because if you're just an actor and all I know is your work and stuff like that, obviously I'm interested in your work, but I am just as, if not more so interested in you as a person. And that's why I ask people to come on the show. So with traveling and with learning Japanese and stuff like that, I'm somehow even more interested in that than I am in Sasuke, which is insane. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, because that that's because because people are definitely interested in Sasuke. Definitely. Low like, these many years later. How is that the longest gig? Like uh, Gotta as be. far as like yeah, I mean I wow. So. Yeah. Wow. What was yeah. that audition like? It was I mean, you know, it's it's like any audition, man. You know, it's it's you go to an audition and you don't always know you know, the, the deal it's going to be, whether it's going to be a big deal or it's not going to be a big deal. Sure. There are things that I work on that I think are going to be a big deal. And then <laughs> the deal. of course so it was, you know, it was another anime show. I had, uh, you know, worked uh, with this uh, studio on a couple of other shows mm-hmm. at the time. And they were, they were calling in, you know, the people that they work with. And I, I don't think I, I truly began to understand there, there, there were, you know, there's several callback, you know, process. Like it came in, uh-huh. like I came in and I read for Naruto and I read for Sasuke oh, cool. and Iruka, Iruka Sensei. And, you know, you have, you read Dude. for a bunch of different things. And just in case, uh, right. You're right. Just in case they, they want to see what, what you fit, you know, best with. Right and on. honestly, with the kinds of characters that I played up until then, I, you know, I'm much more a Naruto type than I was a Sasuke type at the time. Sure. I a lot of heroes and young, you know, sort of naive, excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. Goody two shoes heroes. And um, so I was actually surprised at the, the way that it went uh, as far as the, the role that I got cast in. But um, there, I think there were a few callback, you know, you, you call it, they whittle it down then they whittle it down again. And uh, I don't think I had realized exactly what the, sh- you know, the sort of the following that the show had until I was cast and I started to do more research. Ah. And, and then I just got terrified. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you right know, so. they, they were like, yeah, r- you know, right away, they, you know, the, the fans were, you know, knives out, like, in you know, in a good way. But they kunai. were like, if you get a kunai out. Yes. Very well. <laughs> very well done. I'm here for you. <laughs> right. I appreciate that. I know. I know, Brian. I'm, I'm, I'm excited by this. Uh, but, uh, you know, they were like, if you mess this up, we will kill you. We will end you, you know, and, like, <laughs> and not just me, but like everybody, you know, across right. the board. Yeah. And, and it's it's tough because, you know, so little of it is in our control. You know, we'll come in, we'll do our job do the, to the best of our ability. Yeah, We'll take yeah. the notes. We'll bring what we have naturally. We'll take notes from the director and the whoever else is there giving them. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's just sort of, you know, we can't, we can't worry too much about if anybody's going to like it. We just have to sort of do the best job. Right. You know, and hope for the best. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think people were pretty happy. You know, there will always yeah. be people who aren't happy. Of course, um, of course. And that's fine. I love that. That's honestly. art. Honestly, yeah, that's art. Yep. Exactly. I'm um, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just glad yeah. that uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, nobody showed up at my house dressed as Sasuke with a kunai and, you know. Yeah, that's true. You didn't get like scrolls sent to your house. You're like, ah, don't open it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thankfully. <laughs> thankfully. That's wild. Have you ever met someone who you dubbed? No, you know, I, almost met uh the actor who does the 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 original sasuke japanese sasuke because i was i had already been doing the job for a few years Mm -hmm. and i went to japan for a different job and while i was there i tried to set it up i was i got i left i I got in touch with viz and i'm like guys this is an opportunity i would love i don't know if there's any way that i could (laughs) honestly anybody from the show yeah um 
And they they tried to set it up, and then in the end, while I was there, his schedule was not such that uh, of course. Work. But he's Sasuke. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not blaming exactly. He's Sasuke. He's busy. It's a little busy. Um. Yeah. Uh, certainly not blaming the guy. I would. I would love to. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Um. And you know, those guys are like gods in Japan. So yeah. I'm sure he had plenty, plenty to do. He was posing for his statue. Probably. Rightfully so. I'm into it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Same. Does dubbing ever get easier? Because I did, I've done ADR twice, and it sucked both times, like matching it, lip flaps. Yeah, it, it. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is a skill that can be practiced and got yeah. better at. I, yeah, I think. I think it. You, you got to get used to it. It's like it's like playing an instrument, and in a way, is also very musical, um, oh. in that it has to do with um, pace and you know sound and syncopation and uh, rhythm. Um, I'm, I'm not a musician, so I mean, sure. <laughs> so several of those terms might not be right at all. Sure. Um, but uh, but it is and it, and it is spinning a lot of plates all at the same time. It's 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 in fact it's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head and spinning a bunch of plates because you're yeah. <laughs> you're looking at you know you're looking at the lip flap, so you're trying to make a completely different language fit into that. Yeah. Uh, it's which has to do with and, and you know sometimes. It, it doesn't quite work. And we, you know, we rewrite in the room and by we, I mean, you know, the person directing usually says, hold on, let me see if I can find something that fits that a little better. Uh -huh. um, although sometimes it's a, it's a team effort, but yeah, it's a, a timing and speed and rhythm and, you know, looking for that and also trying to match the, the emotional intent. You want to honor the original actors. Um, All right. Intent. You can't just do something completely different Sure. Um, because you had an idea. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I don't think he's mad anymore. Right, right, exactly. I think I think he's actually laughing. He's not crying. Yeah. <laughs> um. So so it's a lot of different things to do all at the same time. And uh, you know, I yeah, I I feel for you. It's not. It's certainly not something you jump into and is super easy. And if you were, I don't know if you were doing ADR for live action stuff. That's even harder. It was live action. Yeah. yeah. It was awful. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. That is that is super hard. Uh. Uh. Yeah. No thanks. Have you ever have you ever passed out in the booth or gotten close? <laughs> there were a couple of times when <laughs> usually when I have to do like lots of like heavy screaming and things like that, I yeah. have, I've gotten almost to the blackout point there you go. where, where the corners of the room are right, you know, in your peripheral vision, it starts, starts to, to get starts dark, fish you know, and you start to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, here's a quick, because, uh, because you brought together a bunch of things all at the same time Yeah. Um, that, that coincide in a, in a story. And I'll give you the brief version. Ooh. Uh, there is a, there is a live action movie uh, mm -hmm. called Everly. Okay. Uh, it is directed by the phenomenally talented Joe Lynch. Oh, nice. And yes, uh, stars Salma Hayek and is is just a, a pulpy, uh, bloody uh, action romp that is that is delightful in so many in so many ways. Uh, it, it, it hits it checks all my boxes. Hell yeah. But, but I knew Joe and uh, at the end he knew that I spoke Japanese or he remembered from a, to talking to a friend, a mutual friend of ours, the one who introduced us originally, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that I sp spoke Japanese. And he had a situation in his, for his movie where uh, the big bad uh, was this Japanese Yakuza boss. Sweet. Pl played by an amazing uh, Japanese actor who is uh, awesome and who I had seen in many movies and is, is scary as shit in the movie. And like, he's, he's, he's great. Hell yeah. But but when he uh, was, but his English wasn't very good. So when he would do his lines in English, you could tell he lost a little bit of the confidence as, mm -hmm. as you know, as, as much as he, sure. Well, you know, as, as much as the presence was there. Um, and, and Joe was like, I, I have to find a way to, to sort this out. Do you, can you send me a, a voice sample? Do you think you could match this, uh, this actor? Oh. And I did. And I ended up having to go in and, and revoice the, the actor. Dude. And uh, with with all the, the the most respect to this guy who is of course. amazing, um, and and I, I don't think anybody's noticed because oh, I'm not oh, I'm not credited. I was I, I came in sort of as I was I was the I was the fixer. I was the the the, the mechanic or the, uh, the the cleaner, if right. you will. Um, uh, to use another film <laughs> reference, another <laughs> film movie that I love more than uh, Life Gold. itself, but. Uh, but so so I, I just came in and and did that and we put a lot of time into it because when it's a cartoon it's it's a little easier to fudge and I think people are more forgiving right um, but when it's 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 much harder when it's uh, live action uh, yeah. but I'm I'm super proud of that because it was like 
we put my skills together with that guy's skills and 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 brought this guy to life but it's uh it's cool now you're gonna have to go and yeah. watch the movie and see if you otherwise would have noticed oh i'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna. Right. And if I, I know, notice, I, oh, I know you will, Brian. Oh, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> if I notice you're getting a strongly worded email. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I'll and I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. If you I, if you believe if you believe your good reviews, you gotta believe your bad reviews too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's how that works. <laughs> the law of equivalent yep. exchange. Yep. This is the way of things. Oh man. There actually, speaking of things I'm super excited about, orbital redo. Dude. Redux, or re Redux. But, I like I mean, to say I like to say you, redo. Well, well because you're because you're, you're pronouncing it correctly, Brian. Yeah. You, sh you should know better than to pronounce it correctly. I. <laughs> oh man, well, I could I could talk forever about Orbital Redux. I I'll give you something. So, do you remember Hot Shots? Yes. Okay. Part part, so, part one or part two. So listen, <laughs> you're saying it correctly. <laughs> I said Redux for my entire life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. corrected. So now I'm like, all right, this is how it works. So I was like, all right, yeah. it's redo. Okay, Redux. Yes. Looks fantastic. Genuinely super excited about it. I'm so glad because I am so excited to share it with the world because what happened was is, and I'll give just a brief background on what the show please, is. Please do. It was a live action weekly sci-fi show. I can feel it. Uh, yeah. And and it was uh, performed live, like it was. Oh. It was recorded and and broadcast. It was it was on a streaming platform. Uh, a legendary had a streaming platform that, you know, for you know went under for whatever reason. I, I never know why these things happen. Sure, but of um, but uh, and it was uh, you know it was it was behind a paywall. So, so not a lot of people got to see the show. Sure, and which is why I'm so excited to, to, to find and be able to share it. But it was, it was performed live every wow. week. Wow. It was That's rehearsed. Nuts. There were 10 cameras going at any given time. Some, some of which were, you know, locked off and hidden around the set and some were manned cameras or womaned cameras. Uh -huh. uh, we had, a, we had a bunch of different uh, um, camera people on the show. The, it was, it was rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. And uh, the music, the score was also performed by a band live on on the same stage what? at the same time we were performing. No, really, there were no cuts. Like you, we weren't allowed to call cut and reset anything. It was once we had started, you were on the high wire and you had to get to the other side. Uh, all the sound effects, all the bleep bloops, you know that you find in a, yeah. a sci-fi show, all also done live by a live foley artist. What? Um, all of the uh, visual effects that you'll see in there. Yeah, all practical or happening in real time. So, outside of the the spaceship in which the show takes place, uh, there were giant monitors with, uh, you know, whatever was happening, whether it was an explosion or whatever. Yeah. And so we get we would get to see it from inside the ship. It would look like we were looking out onto what? something. If something blew up on the ship, we had a pyro guy come in and blow it up in the <laughs> ship and we had to practice that and if it if it worked it worked if it didn't work it didn't work um it's truly one of the uh greatest things i've ever done in, in my life as a wow. as a performer or maybe otherwise don't tell my son yeah <laughs> uh, but i you know it was and and one of the scariest you know they always say I you bet. know do that thing that scares you or you know if, if something is scary it's there's probably a reason you, you yeah know, you're scared of it or that's you what do life it. is yeah, it was it was terrifying, and but I couldn't say no to it. It was with a director I had worked with before a number of times. Yeah, and I just he came to me and he said, "Yuri, I want to pitch you this thing, uh, but in short, I'm I'm building a spaceship and I want you to pilot it." Now here's the story. Like and I cut him off. I cut him off and I said, "It doesn't matter what you say next. <laughs> the answer is yes. yes. Whatever whatever you're cooking up, I want to be part." I'm of. in. <laughs> so so what happened was is we you know we did the first season. It's eight episodes. Uh, we did it weekly. It's you know it was it was hugely stressful, but but just the greatest thing ever. Um, but then the the platform went under and. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the rights reverted back to us for the show. So what we did is because we, we couldn't, I, I know part of the live experience. Oh, I didn't even mention that there there were interactive elements as well. So oh. the audience, because of the the platform, because it was like a like a Twitch based platform. Sure. Um, people could comment in in real time and they could vote on things in real time. 
And sometimes oh, wow. at, the, at the beginning of the show, they would say, would you rather this happen or this happen in the show? And we would, the actors and everybody else, you know, involved in the live production would have yeah. to be ready for both. What? So if the audience chose this way, we would veer in that direction and it chose the other way in the other direction. And, and on a couple of times they were, we would get fed something um, and we would have to improv. Oh. Uh, that, that, that didn't happen a lot, but it, but it happened a couple of times we had to, to do that. So, so it's like a, so can you have a high wire on top of a high wire? I think, no, I think it's just one. I don't know. It felt like yeah, a high wire on top a, of a high wire. It's a double. What does it mean? What, what does it's it mean? It's like, it's, it's a double rainbow it's, high wire. Yeah. <laughs> double decker. You know, my, yeah. my kid, the other, my kid, the other day said, I double decker hate this. And I was like, Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Good. I'm going <laughs> to, so it was a double decker high wire is what it was. Um, but, but so we, we, uh, well, despite the fact that it was live, um, we were still recording all of it because there right. was no way we weren't going to record it for posterity. Of course. Um, and so when we got the rights back, we thought, God, you know, there were so many people who didn't get to see this. And we, we were looking over the, you know, the footage and we're like, and it, we're too proud of this to, to not have people be able to see it. Yeah. So, so we spent some time, um, you know, just uh, getting, you know, the, the, the best angles and uh, mastering the, you know, the, the audio and just making it as good as, it could, you know, that version could be. Yeah. And, um, and it's going to, uh, we, we, we talked to a bunch of people about it. We, you know, we pitched a bunch of places and uh, Dust, uh, which is uh, uh, a, I don't know exactly what you would call it. It's a, a channel sure. on, on, on YouTube, Gun, Gunpowder and Spy, Skies. It's their, yeah, their sci-fi, their sci-fi aggregator. I don't know. It's, but it's a place where we noticed that uh, a lot of really good, interesting, indie sci-fi stuff was was going and being seen that had an audience because more than anything uh we wanted we wanted people to see it we just yeah, we felt like totally. not enough people saw this and so uh uh dust digs it and um they're going to be uh, putting it out at the end of the summer we still don't have a, a launch date but uh but keep an eye out oh. um it's I'm, I'm so excited like i'm excited to re-experience it again and to for people to see it and 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 I want people to know because you you really wouldn't know that it was live. Obviously, you know, I didn't at this know. point. You see exactly. There you go. There you go. If you watch the trailer, the great. Yeah. yeah. If you watch the trailer, and and when we were putting when we you know th th going forward the de the decision to put this out there, we had to be honest with ourselves. We had to say, look, if this can't exist on a gimmick that doesn't exist for it anymore. You know, it, sure. It has to be good enough on its own as a show yes. for us to put it out there. And we felt that it was. And I'm glad that uh, the trailer leads you to believe that that it might actually be that. I'm, I'm yeah. really excited. I'm excited for people to see it. I'm good. I'm so excited. So much blood, to sweat, see and it. tears went into it. it. It shows that that's one thing. So I I'm a big fan yeah. of like supporting good people and like when they do things and like you can see you can see heart when it's in there like it comes through the screen and that trailer just like. I my favorite show of all time is Firefly, oh, and so yeah. I was like, "Yep, you're right. You're singing my music here with like a right. sci-fi show, and I think you're an incredible actor. So the fact that you're live action, you're the captain, you're doing everything. It looks great. I can't wait. It's gonna be so Thanks, cool. Brian. It's gonna be so. Thanks. And I didn't even know this part. So now I'm even more excited. Right. Right. Oh, excellent. Great. It's nuts. That's great. Nuts. Great. Great. Well, dude, I could talk to you forever, but we've we've reached our hour. Yeah, we we have and and uh, maybe we'll just have to do it again sometime. Listen, you have an open door right here anytime you. you want. This was so fun. Right, it was fun for me too. Good. I'm so glad. You never know, you know, cuz we yeah, we didn't true. know each other before now and it could have that's gone true. terrible, but I had a great time. <laughs> and now we're and now we're besties. I feel like it. So like we'll flip a coin to see who chooses the tattoo. Um, right. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we'll have Tara flip it just to be fair. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Dude, this was great. Uh, before I let you go, I gotta ask: yeah. uh, Where can people yeah. find you online? Where can they find things you're doing? Uh, I am I'm fairly uh, active on Twitter. I'm easily stalked there um, at Yuri Lowenthal. I'm also at Yuri Lowenthal on Instagram. Although um, I don't spend as much time on Instagram, I do I do uh, let people know what's up over there. So those those two places. My my website is very outdated. Don't go and visit <laughs> it. You must never go there. <laughs> never, never go. Never go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And...
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.